see you. I am delighted today that I have got a special guest, Jason Fox, aka Foxy from SAS Who Dares Wins. I was just telling Jason that um, my son, who's very unimpressed by all of my work, um, was most excited I've ever seen him when I said I was going to talk to you. So welcome today, Jason. Lovely to see you. Lovely to have you here today. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Really appreciate it. So you have a new book out, don't you? So we're going to be talking to you about resilience today. And your book is called Life Under Fire, How to Build Inner Strength and Thrive Under Pressure. And if ever there was a time that we needed a book like this, it's now. So um, let's talk a little bit about resilience. I mean, you have uh, went into the Special Forces. Well, no, you were a Marine at 16 and then you went into the SAS later. So I think you probably know everything there is to know about being resilient. But yeah. where did start about building our own resilience and our own inner strength so if we're feeling really wobbly second lockdown perhaps coming on how do we start saying okay i need to build build myself up now where do we start i think um it's difficult to know where to generalize a start point because everyone's different an individual but i think a lot of it is we can sort of generalize it and i think a lot of it comes from you, to build inner strength, you have to look inside. You've got to look internally, and, and you need to start acknowledging certain things that are going on within you. You know, m mainly emotionally. So you need to become slightly more emotionally aware. And it's it's not. It, I don't think it takes too much practice. It's more about your 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 sort of approach mentally towards who how you feel. So if you feel a certain way, instead of you know ignoring it and trying to push it to one side you're better off sitting down and actually exploring that emotion and giving it a little bit of respect and then sort of like working once you've explored it and you realize what it is you'll probably then work out why you're feeling that way which means you're better equipped to counter the negative side of that emotion and so i think a lot of you know yes we've we've had a tough year every everyone has you know some more than others uh, and it's a lot of it is the fear of the unknown, I think, as well, and the fear of going back into a situation that we don't necessarily like because we've already experienced it. But, you know, if you can understand that you're not in it alone, so that comes down to a lot of communication, communication, communicating with people, talking to them, you know, sharing your problem. You know, they'll share you theirs. They're, those problems are hard. They don't feel as bad because you've lightened the load. And then realize that the you know tough times don't last forever nothing does you know and that's the, the the beauty of it you know it makes the good times shine brighter so yes we're, we're going into sort of uncharted territory or, or, or sort of semi-known territory to be honest and that we'll come out the the other side of it and and you know we're we're, we're humans we, we learn how to survive we learn how to adapt and that's what we're going to do you just you know times are tough You've got to find a positive in something. You've got to be emotionally aware. And you sometimes have to, you know, there is a little bit of grit required as well to get through them. And, and you should take pride in the fact that you can find that within yourself. You know, that is something to be proud of when you when you do find it and tap into it. Yeah. I, my, I, I say that we're always much stronger than we think we are. You know, it's about grit. So um, how do we, how do we, uh, find that within us as you say because you know when the chips are down and it's mm. and probably in the SAS you've been in these really really stressful situations and you think oh my god <laughs> I might I'm gonna die or you know I can't even imagine what it's like so what 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 are the methods that you use to kind of bring yourself back to center and power on through um well, I'll answer it in two parts. So basically, the first part when I look when I was doing this book, actually, I was like, you know, how how did I get through the times that I've experienced and been involved in, and also including my, you know, my mental mental health, I'd say breakdown. You know, I'd look back and how did how did I how was I taught resilience or, or inner strength? And I think a lot for me happened when I was sixteen when I joined the Marines, and they're quite they're a very good organisation, and I was like looking at how they install resilience into young men or young people now and it's it's down to their culture and they 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 breed it from an early age so they teach you the four pillars of the commando spirit is what it's known as but those four pillars are, are p 
pillars are courage, determination, unselfishness, and cheerfulness in the face of adversity. So basically, the courage one is about having the courage to step out of your comfort zone and, and, and challenge yourself. The determination is basically having the discipline to find the grit inside you to go through those tough times to then make an uncomfortable situation comfortable because you've developed and learned about yourself. And yeah. selfishness is to always look out for other people around you first, before you, which sounds odd at first, but if you think about it, if everyone else is doing that for you, then and you're doing it for them, you've got each other's backs, and it just breeds a nice environment to be in, a trustworthy yeah. environment. And then ultimately the unsel uh, sorry, the cheerfulness in the face of adversity is about finding the positive in what could it potentially be dark times, and because it's the positive outlet that will get you through them. And it, it will help you find a way out of those tough times, those tough situations. So I think that that was ingrained into me from a very early age. And it, it taught me a lot about my approach to challenging situations. And I chose to put myself into those challenging situations. But then ultimately going forward, you know, when you're in the special forces, especially, you have to be very, or I had to be very emotionally aware, which meant acknowledging my my emotions when they came in so i can remember many times when i felt really fearful and i could feel that manifested inside me it feels weird and it can feel horrible but instead of like curling up into a ball i would use that emotion in a positive way so it's up to you it's your emotion you can do with it what you wish you can either yeah. make it a negative one or a positive one and for me yeah. the positive way was to channel that emotion and make it switch me on so i'd become more focused on the job at hand and what i needed to do to then get myself out of it yeah so it makes it so again uh, i've talked obviously as editor of psychology i talk to a lot of therapists and they mm. talk about using our emotions as um friends so even if it's a negative emotion that that friend is trying to tell you something it's a straight talking mm. friend that might say honey you need to change this this and this so what I'm hearing you say is that when you kind of feel fearful, it's okay. Fear is your kind of action point to focus. You need to focus now because you've got to get out of this. And exactly. what a great technique. You know, I feel fearful, but okay, focus on what can I, and what do you focus on? Focus on the way out, focus on the solution, focus um, on. A lot of it is a salute or a lot of it is, it's not necessarily a foolproof solution because you might be in a situation that is ever changing, but it's about, you know, as a, as a professional soldier, you, you do a lot of training, you get taught an awful lot and you've got that bank of knowledge within you and you're, you're, you're taught certain skill sets or a certain way to operate. And I think for me, in, in the situation that I'm thinking about now, it was about switching on and just focusing on what I needed to do, you know, where I, how I needed to move across certain ground, what equipment I needed to employ, what I needed to do to make sure that I could do whatever it is I needed to do. But that go that's the same for anything else, you know, whether it's being a soldier or or you know yeah. working from home and you've got a, a task to complete online, you know, okay, I'm feeling a little bit anxious about something, but I know what I'm doing. I've got a job, I've been, I've had this job for a while. Let, I just need to focus a little bit, slow the situation down in my head. And if I can do it in the middle of a gunfight that runs at a million miles an hour, I reckon you can probably do it in most situations where you just you know, even if you're in conversing with someone and you're not happy with the way it, um, maybe a meeting's going, you just, you can check it. You can be like, All right, hang on a minute. I just need to get a grip of where we are on this. Slow it down. Be a little bit more methodical in your approach to whatever it is. And then once you've thought about it a little bit more and you've breathed, you're probably in a better place to then, you know, crack on and, and, and sort of attack the situation. And I think, you know, being emotionally aware allows you to do that. It allows you to check what's going on and take a few deep breaths and be a bit more calculated in what you in, in, in your in your maneuvers going forward yeah 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 I, when you're talking i mean you wrote in your book um battle scars you about your own trauma and ptsd and your own mental health struggles so so there is the everyday anxiety that you might feel in life and then there's trauma isn't there when you've when you've suffered a real blow to your emotional self um, and you found your way back from that. Um, if, if, if someone's listening to this interview and have maybe not in a battle situation, but in, in life has, has suffered a trauma, what, what advice would you give them? You know, you've been there, you've been to the darkness. 
and you found your way back out again. What advice would you give to anyone listening to this who is struggling with a, a similar kind of trauma? I think the the key to the the key to trauma or to to feeling in in you putting it or you feel different to what you prefer to feel like. Yeah. So for me, I, I I didn't talk about it at an early stage because I was embarrassed about it and I was worried about career and I was worried about an awful lot of other things. But because of that, I was lying to myself about where my head was at. And so in turn, I wasn't talking about it. It was, it was, it was compounding. It was, you know, over exaggerating what was going on. And then, you know, if it, my advice, the minute you start feeling mood change, you know, I, I was, I felt really, I felt it wasn't that I was having flashbacks or anything with my with PTSD. I, my my attitude to the job changed, and I wasn't excited by it. And I was very I was having to dig deep for motivation and drive. And it took me a long time to realize that. But it, if I'd have stopped, thought about it at an early stage, I'd have realized what was going on. And then it's about talking to someone, you're going on a journey of finding the right person to talk to. It might not happen straight away, but that's the way it get, that's the way you know life is you, sometimes you've got to search around a little bit but ultimately talking about what's going on finding the right person to help you work out what you need to do to to be reinvigorated by life and i think that's that's the, the most important thing we said it before it communication you know it, the communication in the military is key to everything without communication you are in a <laughs> you're in stuck but it's the same with anything in life. You need to communicate. It might it might be that the first person you can might communicate with, it you know, it might not work out. But you're on a journey of finding that right person. It should be exciting. So try and spin the situation you're in slightly positively and look at it as a journey. And then go and go and talk. My advice, my there's, there's no dark art to it as far as I'm concerned. It's go and talk. And you need to go and find someone that you trust or that you connect with and 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 share your experiences with them so they can come in from a different angle and help you find the right path for you yeah yeah i mean i think um for i mean at psychology we're such a massive fan of therapy and for reaching out uh, but mm -hmm. I, i've got primarily a female audience for psychologies um so I mean, what what I what I see is with my my son and my partner, um, you know they they were so impressed that I'm so excited that I was going to talk to you. But of course, and they they're not so great about talking about their emotions, mm. um, and I can see them struggling with you know how to do it. Are there any um, tips that you could give to us about you know when we're trying to get the men in our lives to open up or to reach out? You can see that they're struggling. You can see that they don't want to talk about it. You can see that they're closing down. You can see that they're, you know, that the joy has gone out of their life and mm. you want them to reach out. How, how do we, I mean, it's, yeah. it's you saying what you're saying, which will have more effect than probably we will have. Maybe we could just show them this video. But um, mm. so what, what could we do to get our, our men folk um, more support or to, to, to help them? I think, um, Sometimes it's difficult with, with blokes. They don't. Blokes are pretty rubbish with the direct approach. Well, I, we obviously need something to talk about, and you'd be like, "Oh, shut up." I think <laughs> I mean, we spoke about it earlier. It's a little, a slightly more considered, subtle approach would probably work a little bit better. You know, instead of saying that we need to talk about something, like I mean, I think you mentioned it a minute ago. You know, it's about going for let's go for a walk or go for a coffee, or yeah. maybe there's some another stimulus that. Do, try and do something that they like doing which will in turn if you, you're going to talk anyway that's what people do and then and then eventually you know if you keep chipping away it's, it's not a quick fix sometimes either it requires yeah. a bit of determination a bit of perseverance but ultimately if you keep chipping away and you know being non non-aggressive is the wrong word but being less obviously persistent yeah non-direct sometimes non -direct. i think yeah, I was trying. Yeah, to yeah, yeah. Well, with my son, I think that's definitely the way it's worked. Where if, if I try and talk to him about, are you worried about? No, I'm fine. Go away. But if yeah, I yeah. say, you come for a walk with me, it'll mm. start kind of leaking out. And um, so yeah, yeah, that was really nice, mom. And then he'll go off. <laughs> but yeah, it was just, 
he's 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 expressed himself a little bit so it's helped yeah, exactly it's just finding you know finding the safe place where they don't feel that they're being interrogated you know for some some young lads it might be joined asked to play some game on playstation with them i don't know you know but there's yeah. you know there's a common ground where you know to do something that you enjoy is gets people talking you know it, it just requires a little bit of it's like a stealthy approach to getting someone to open up and with with men it you know i think it definitely needs that subtle approach as opposed to the direct approach sometimes yeah or they could just buy your book, which is Life Under Fire, How to Build Inner Strength and Thrive Under Pressure. I think I'm going to buy that for my son because I think he'll love that. But um, one, so before you go, we, oh, our time is up. But one one last tip, that one last thing or one piece of wisdom that you could give to us from the book um, that we'll learn or one thing that, you know, we've got lots of people will be watching this video and, you know, they may be struggling with lockdown. And if there's one thing that we haven't already said that you could communicate to them, around you know i mean for me it's like you said oh you know we'll get to the other side of this you know which is it's true we will and as you, it's just and you know your words about just find your grit uh, uh, that that'll stay with me uh, yeah. but anything that you'd like to add before you go i think um i think we've covered quite a, you know quite a few points that are that come up in the book but i think the main one is just to be honest with yourself again we go back to that emotional awareness if you wake up on a morning and you're not feeling 100 percent emotionally take the time before you start the day to work out what it is that's making you feel down because if, if you try to push it to one side you'll go through the rest of the day really unhappy and you'll probably impact a lot of other people in a negative way because of the atmosphere around you and if you just if you yeah. did that took like 10 minutes or whatever it was to just explore what was going on you'd probably fix it before you even left the house or before you even cracked on with whatever it is that you need to do. And you'd be in a much better headspace. You know, too many times do I see people just pushing emotion to one side to just try and crack on, but it does no one any favors. So I think just be honest with yourself, give give yourself the respect you deserve and acknowledge a few emotions yeah. when they come into the forefront of your mind, really. Just one more question about that. Do you, how do you do it? Do you, do you? I mean, for me, I journal a lot, so I kind of think, oh, I'm feeling really rubbish, and I'll write a little bit about it, and then it'll help me. Oh, yeah, it's because of I feel this and I feel that, and that helps me. How do you do it? Do you do it just mentally, or do you write it down? Yeah. Or yeah, yeah, I just do it mentally. I might, I might, I might chat. Maybe you know, I'll be like, oh God, I've just suddenly realised that I got this bill to pay, or you know, whatever it is. And, yeah. and, you know, the, it, sometimes that takes a bit of grit and determination like, oh, i've got to sit down at the laptop and do it but ultimately you because i'd woken up in a bit of a whether i was anxious moody it doesn't matter i've like looked at it worked out what it was and then dealt with it quickly and then it sets you up better for the rest of the day you know yeah. I, I still I still have to remind myself to do it i'm you know there'll be times when my my missus will be like what you know you're being a bit miserable you need to put yourself out and like oh yeah, do you actually so yeah it's this yeah you know yeah. It's, it's all a work in progress but ultimately i yeah. you know, if you some people need to write it down fine if they if if people are like me you can do it and i just do it in my head because i just work it out there yeah yeah but what you know that whole idea of so really naming what it is is it is your bill to pay or you're really dreading something or that's worrying it's naming it, saying it out loud or, or writing it down or whatever, getting it out, talking about it, and then taking action to sort of, and sometimes things can't be solved, but you can but you can sort of take actions towards feeling more positive or looking after yourself that day, that kind of thing. Yeah, it's great. Exactly. Yeah. Jason, thank you so much for your time today. Um, that was really um, inspiring and keep up the good work and keep talking about all of this stuff because <laughs> my men folk in my house, they definitely, you know, they, they inspired by you and um, they listen to you where they don't listen to a word I say. <laughs> so, <laughs> time today. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. Thanks for having me on. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye.